Hey, what's up everybody and welcome back to News Dose and Xbox Game Pass. I think we all kind of know its reputation. It's widely viewed as the best deal in gaming for really good reason actually. And well, you know what? They're proving exactly why it's viewed that way today. It's just absolutely exceptional what they're doing over there. So we're going to talk about that today and just once again, why Xbox Game Pass is so good. Also, by all indications, it is starting to look like Nintendo has some big plans for the month of September with, wait for it, a new Direct. Yeah, I know we kind of hear about this on a monthly basis, and that's why that question is always, is this really true? That's always the question, isn't it? But I'll tell you one thing, September is starting to look like a very, very fun month if some of these rumors turn out to be true. Before we get into anything though, I, I do have two things to just kind of bring to your attention real quick. The first of which is those buttons below. Make sure to hit that like, subscribe, and bell notification for daily gaming news. And well, my occasional rants as well. Also, and uh, um, so YouTube has a bit of a problem right now. Basically, YouTubers like myself, we, we get impersonated. Somebody takes our profile picture and then they put some weird name together, oftentimes with this ridiculously long numbers behind it. And they go to the comment sections, reply to people saying they've won something. Pretty much what they're trying to do here is that they're trying to get your information or something like that. I do try to block as many of these accounts as I can that way and try to keep you safe that way. But, I mean, they just they just keep coming back. And, and I do get replies every once in a while from somebody wondering if, if I was the one sending those messages to them, but I'm not. So, just to let you know, if you do get a reply like that, I'm not giving any type of rewards away or anything like that. Sorry, but if you do hate scammers like I do, I mean, awful, awful people. But if you do hate these scammers, I would highly recommend checking out the channel Scammer Payback. That is an absolutely amazing and just flat out amusing channel. So go check that out. With that out of the way, though, let's just go and get right into the news. Starting off with a brand new Mafia game that's now officially been confirmed by the developers themselves. This was actually already in the rumor mill, which, you know, did make some sense considering they've recently remastered some of their previous games. And a lot of the times when you see a company do something like that, it is in preparation for a completely new installment. Think of something like Alan Wake as an example. Those remasters will more or less bring back old and new fans alike to the franchise as they work on their next game. But yes, Hangar 13 in a 20th anniversary interview was asked about what's to come next for the franchise, and this here was their response. I'm happy to confirm we've started work on an all new Mafia project. While it's a few years away and we can't share anything more right now, we're really excited to keep working on this beloved franchise and to entertain our players with new stories. So there it is, it is official, and this, I would say, is it's exciting to see. Mafia is a pretty good series after all, and early on it did draw some comparisons to the GTA franchise, but with more of a linear setting. But that there's the thing, I'm very curious to see what direction it'll take with a brand new Mafia game and just the state-of-the-art consoles and of course PC rigs. It was rumored before that it could be a prequel developed under new leadership, that, that's how those rumors began in the first place, but we'll probably have to wait quite a while before we get more details on any of that. As they said here, it's still years away, but if you are a Mafia fan, this is certainly good news. Now also, PlayStation just can't seem to get out of their own way this generation, or really, I'd say since Jim Ryan's taken over PlayStation. They've had a lot of bad PR under his lead. I mean, they're still making great games and everything. I mean, no, there's no doubt about that. I love their games myself, but some of their business decisions certainly, certainly don't seem to be made for the players, as they like to say. And it seems like the community is starting to be very skeptical of some of their intentions. So what's happening right now is that they're releasing a new PlayStation 5 revision, which is something they've previously done this generation. If you remember right, earlier this generation, they did remove some of the heat sink and, you know, fans they thought it was going to catch fire or something. But ultimately, it just made the PlayStation 5 weigh a little bit less and maybe reduced some of the cost as well. I don't work at Sony myself, so I can't confirm or deny how much each part cost, but that right there seems to be the problem with this discovery. Of course, last week, as we very much talked about, Sony announced they're raising the price of the PlayStation 5, which fans are very, very angry about for very, very obvious reasons. And now, apparently, this is all happening amongst another PlayStation 5 revision that once again is reducing its weight. It is being reported that the new revision weighs 200 grams less for the 
PlayStation 5 Digital, and then 300 grams less for the PlayStation 5 Physical. Now, we don't know exactly how they're reducing the weight just yet. We'll, we'll probably hear a lot more about that as people start to get it in their hands. Though the heat sink, once again, could be the culprit here. Either way, though, this is a quite significant weight reduction, especially considering the launch PlayStation 5, which I guess is like 500 grams heavier. Now, to be clear, though, just because this new model weighs less, that doesn't necessarily mean it costs less. I mean, it might, but that's the assumption that many fans have made. And I think that that just kind of boils down to what I said last week. This move to increase the price of the PlayStation 5 has led to some trust problems between Sony and its fans. And now they're receiving some pretty heavy backlash. I mean, I guess on one side, the PlayStation 5 will continue to sell well, and I think that's what Sony believes because it hasn't really met that initial demand, but I think that there might be a concern on whether or not this could actually affect their long-term reputation with fans going forward. I mean, that is an important thing to kind of monitor here, but I guess Sony, they feel confident enough in doing things like this, but yeah, I, I would say the skepticism that we're seeing right now is kind of a direct response in how fans view some of Sony's recent decisions. Let's go and talk about Xbox Game Pass though, as they're having a, yeah, they're having a big day right now. They actually have four games releasing into the service today, three of which are day one titles. Now you all know me, I, I do believe the day one titles are what makes Game Pass so special, and even more so when they actually turn out to be good games. We'll get into that here in just a moment though, but first, let's take a look at the four games releasing into Game Pass today. As you can see, it includes Commandos 3 HD Remaster, Immortals Phoenix Rising, Tinykin, which I have very much been looking forward to myself, and then last but certainly not least, Immortality. Now, Immortals Phoenix Rising is kind of the known commodity here. This is a big Ubisoft game that released right as the Xbox series and the PlayStation 5 launched. And as I've said before, I genuinely do believe it's one of Ubisoft's best games that's released in the last five years. Yes, it's often overlooked because its art style doesn't necessarily jive with everybody per se, but I'm telling you all, it actually looks much better in person and it's legitimately a very good game. It does have some similarities with Zelda Breath of the Wild, which I say that in a good way, but I'd also say it's its own game as well, and I'd highly, highly recommend it. If you don't just want to listen to me though, okay, that's, that's fine, but critics do seem to echo my opinions on this game. It does have an 81 overall score on Metacritic, which is, as you all know, very good. So again, Immortals Phoenix Rising is a known good game. Give it a try. For those that's played Immortals already though, as I have myself, maybe you'll instead be interested in one of these day one releases, which by the way, are receiving some high praise. The first of which is Sam Barlow's new game, Immortality. Now, if you don't know who Sam Barlow is, he's worked in games like Her Story. So Immortality is his next FMV interactive narrative style of game, and it appears they've hit an absolute home run here. As we speak, Immortality has a 90 overall score on Metacritic with 28 reviews. That could drop a race still, but it does seem clear that Immortality is a very good game with a gripping and thrilling story. Immortality is a mystery game where you'll follow the life of an actress who's gone missing. So again, this is a day one game. It's unique and apparently it's very, very good. You Game Pass subscribers out there are already having a good time with both Immortals and Immortality. But that's not quite all, because Tinykin also seems to be getting some high remarks here as well. Now, this is the one that I've been anticipating since I first saw it, I believe, last year. But again, Tinykin does have an 81 overall score on Metacritic, again, as I'm currently recording. So now here's kind of the big problem, not a bad problem to have, but you know, which game do you start out with? See, it's always just kind of funny to me that there are certain people out there that wants to act like Game Pass doesn't have interesting games because some of their releases are a little smaller. You know, they're not all big AAA releases. But see, I'm over here and I'm just struggling, just struggling to keep up with all these just absolute bangers. It's really just constant anymore. And really, we're seeing that today with these three quality titles. I think for me though, I, I will start out with Tinykin. Again, I've been very much looking forward to this game myself for well over a year. It just kind of looks like this mix of Paper Mario with its art style. It's got some Pikmin elements to it. And then, and I very much like these type of games, 3D platforming. That seems like a great combination of paper to me. And plus, Splash Team's last game, Splasher, was a fantastic 2D platformer. If you missed that one out, I'd also recommend that. Without a doubt though, I'm very much expecting to enjoy Tinykin. 
Overall, though, I would say that it's been a very fun month for Xbox Game Pass with games like Two Point Campus that released into Game Pass just earlier this month. You had Turbo Golf Racing, and now all these games among several, several others. It's it just, it never ends with Game Pass. And you know what's crazy? In just a few days, they'll be announcing even more games for the month of September. Of course, I'll update you as soon as we hear about all of that. Now, speaking of September, it really does just sound like it's going to be a potentially just fun overall month for all gamers involved. We already have a few events confirmed, such as TGS for fans of Japanese games. That's that's looking like a fun event. There's Ubisoft Forward. A Disney Marvel game event was announced. Call of Duty has a showcase coming. Capcom's doing their own thing with TGS. And then there's also a few rumors for not only a PlayStation event, but also a Nintendo Direct. Now, I know we kind of hear about this on a monthly basis by this point, so you never really know if this will actually happen until Nintendo confirms it themselves, but there does seem to be some steam picking up for a general Nintendo Direct. This is because a prominent insider, Nate the Hate, flat out said that a Nintendo Direct is set for the month of September. Now, he's had a pretty decent track record in the past, though, as always, I would still kind of take this with a grain of salt. We've been burned by these rumors far too many times in the past, so do take this with a grain of salt. But I thought we'd still talk about this today because I do think that there are some reasons to believe this could actually be true. The first of which is just based on past history. Nintendo last year did have their big General Direct, in fact, in the month of September. So they could do a very similar thing here as well. Now, keep in mind, that's just a guess on my part, but there's a little bit more to this than just simply that. One thing that fans have spotted online is that Nintendo has several mystery apps going through maintenance, today actually, which fits in with the timing here. It almost comes off as if Nintendo is preparing to make some soonish announcements, maybe, possibly. I mean, there's no guarantee on any of that, and this is just speculation, but... That's the other part that kind of stands out to me. We've heard one very, very consistent rumor this year, and I very much hope this is true, but that is a Metroid Prime Remaster exists in some shape or form. We've actually heard this game is completely finished, and even Jeff Grubb back in June said that not only is this rumor true, but he said that he was told pretty definitively that Metroid Prime Remastered is going to be one of Nintendo's big holiday games. Now, Jeff Grubb seems to know his stuff pretty well, so th that is a pretty strong statement coming from him. And if what he was told is indeed true, again, I'm very much hoping it is, I mean, Nintendo will have to announce that game sometime here soon. The clock is ticking after all. The holidays are right around the corner, so September seems to be as good of a place as any to confirm the existence of Metroid Prime Remastered. There's also some other rumors kind of floating around with maybe less credence to them, but we've heard things like a GBA emulator is coming to Switch Online. That would be really cool to see. And then there's also the ongoing rumors of Zelda Wind Waker and then Twilight Princess coming over to the Switch. Who knows if those will actually end up being real. I mean, we've been hearing about those for quite a while. I, I certainly hope they end up being real. But either way, I, I think that there are some things that kind of lines up with a possible September Direct. Still, though, again, just kind of take this all with a grain of salt. But here's to hoping. Let's come take a look at the poll of the day, though, where I asked you all, would you be more willing to play mobile games if PlayStation and Xbox use some of their popular franchises to make mobile games? And as you can see here, most of you all would not. 71% of you said no, while 19% of you said yes, and 5% of you said that you already play mobile games regularly. Now, this is just kind of the thing when it comes to hardcore gamers. There is this stigma that most mobile games are just not all that good, which there is a reason for that. They're certainly not of the same quality and the same standards that we're used to seeing when it comes to console or PC games. And oftentimes, these mobile games, they, they just tend to feel like a cash grab, more or less. So, to see most of you not interested in something like this is very understandable, to say the least. But all at the same time, I'd still say that it's a smart thing for Xbox and PlayStation to get into the mobile market, both of which do very much seem to be preparing for that, in fact. As confirmed yesterday, Sony is acquiring a mobile developer, and they're joining their new mobile PlayStation division. Then, as for Xbox, part of the reason that they're acquiring Activision Blizzard, and this was confirmed just last week as well, is that because they have King, which has a lot of expertise when it comes to mobile games like Candy Crush. Whether us hardcore gamers like them or not, mobile games can absolutely be huge, and they reach a very, very broad market. 
So if Xbox were to make a popular Halo game as an example, or if Sony were to make a popular Ratchet and Clank game for mobile devices, that would increase their brand and IP recognition, all while being a potential cash cow. So for those two reasons, this is a very, very smart thing to do. This is also exactly why Nintendo has attempted to break into the mobile market with games like Mario Kart, you have Animal Crossing, and a number of other mobile games as well. And just like Nintendo, Xbox and Sony would be making these mobile games as an additive to their hardcore games that we already see. They're not diving into this market with the thought process to replace their already established AAA console games. So I don't necessarily look at this as any type of negative news. I, I, I saw some people kind of poking fun at PlayStation for their, their mobile division. But, you know, it, it's a good thing because, again, th those, those reasons I just mentioned, I, I just think at the same time, it's just for a lot of us hardcore gamers we just don't care about these games and I, I do completely completely understand why anyways though that's it for this episode but if you like the video don't forget the bell notification and subscribe button for more content just like this also if you'd like to support the channel through patreon thank you for making this content possible peace out